Hi, I'm Indanam. Joy-Cons, you know them, you love them, probably hate them a bit too. You may or may not be aware of their most obscure feature, the infrared camera, which is this black little rectangle at the bottom of your right Joy-Con. Basically, it detects infrared light, also known as IR, which is invisible to the human eye. Now, if you're like me, the first time you heard the term IR camera, you thought, oh, sick, a camera, so I can take photos with this. No, you cannot. Are you crazy? Oh, uh, all right, never mind then. And proceeded to forget about it as time went on. However, I was reminded of it once again when I started playing Game Builder Garage earlier this year. Now, if you're not familiar, it's Nintendo's game that allows you to make games. Instead of learning to type code like a programmer, you just connect these little devices called nodons to make actions happen. So as I was playing, I stumbled across these two nodons, IR camera and IR light. At first this perplexed me because I had no idea this black box could both send and receive light. But then I realized the potential. I can send light signal from one Joy-Con to another and use that signal to trigger something. Now, being uneducated on what IR light was, I pictured it as an invisible laser beam. And that then reminded me of those museum robbery scenes in movies where someone has to dodge a room full of lasers just to steal a precious artifact. And that's when I knew I was going to make a Nintendo Switch burglar alarm. The concept was pretty straightforward in my mind. Set two right Joy-Cons spaced apart with their IR cameras facing each other. One Joy-Con emits a constant light signal, while the other one receives that signal. When someone walks between the two Joy-Cons, it cuts off signal from that receiver and that triggers the alarm. Sounds pretty simple, right? First, I had to test how the IR features actually worked. The IR camera nodon doesn't actually output a camera image, just these boxes that indicate the position of the incoming light. It's pretty unreliable at detecting how much signal is coming in. Thankfully, we only need it to detect whether there is signal or no signal. This is where I ran into the main problem. As I walked around the room to position the Joy-Cons, the IR camera nodon would receive sporadic signals and they weren't coming from the emitter Joy-Con. This had me a bit worried and I nervously wondered, is infrared just too inconsistent to make anything effective with? Had this build up of inspiration and excitement over a silly homemade burglar alarm all been for nothing? But then I stopped for a moment. I started rotating the receiver Joy-Con in my hand and luckily I noticed the source of the unwanted light, the windows, or more specifically, sunlight. Had I done even the slightest bit of research beforehand, I would have known that the sun is the main source of natural infrared. Thankfully, it didn't take too long for me to figure out. I went over to the windows and tried shutting the blinds and problem solved. The rogue IR was gone. Obviously I could have waited until night, but it wouldn't be a very good burglar alarm if it couldn't work 24 hours a day. Now I was in the dark, but I was glad to discover that normal electric lights do not emit IR. Great. So now I was safe. The only IR in the room would come directly from the emitter Joy-Con. Okay, with the infrared under control, it was time to program the alarm. First off, I powered this IR light node on so that player one's right Joy-Con constantly emits IR light. I set this IR camera node on to player 2's right Joy-Con. That's the receiver. Now remember, I want the alarm to trigger when the camera stops receiving signal, because that means someone's walked through it. So when the camera does not have signal, it should turn on the alarm. This flag stays switched on once the alarm has been triggered. So then if the IR signal reconnects, the alarm will keep ringing. We don't want it to stop once the intruder has passed the sensor. The activated flag triggers the alarm's effects. One of them is this bell sound effect. I also connected the flag to these nodons here. They're set up to create a flashing signal that gives a sense of urgency to the other effects. These flashing effects include a yellow background, big red text, and vibration in player one's left Joy-Con. Now, it should be working, but there's one more thing I should add. See, you don't want the alarm to trigger while you're still trying to line up the Joy-Cons. Ideally, you'd want to arm the alarm before it will work. I set the left stick button to arm and disarm the alarm. By quickly adding this AND node on, the alarm will now only ring when the signal is cut and it's armed. I also added these node ons that reset the whole device if you disarm it after the alarm's triggered. Okay, I think that's all the important functions I need. Time to put it to the test. Alrighty, so let's set up these two right Joy-Cons to point at each other and get a consistent stream of IR going. Uh, we're going to start with a small gap as if it was like a doorway width, as if our burglar's coming in a door. 
Um, and then we'll move on to a longer gap and see how that works. I've got the gray Joy-Con emitting the IR light and the blue one receiving. Now they're set up pretty straight across from each other so we should get a pretty constant signal. I haven't seen any flickering of the receiving IR signal so they should be pretty solid. Let's walk through it and it cuts out, that's what we want. Just cuts out for a moment which is enough to trigger the alarm once it's armed. So I think we're ready to go. Let's arm the alarm and we'll put the switch and the vibrating left Joy-Con in the other room. All right, we're armed and ready to go. Let's see if the alarm can handle a doorway width gap. There it is. I think we got him, boys. All right, let's see that in action one last time. So my doorway alarm went off pretty much without a hassle, which is great, but it's not gonna cover every situation now, is it? No, we need to test how well the alarm will work over several meters. Now I've got the receiver Joy-Con propped up on a table by the wall, and I've actually got the emitter Joy-Con on a wheelie chair. I'm gonna pull the chair back as far as I can to see how much distance the IR stream can handle before it starts flickering. All right, so it's struggling with the signal about here. If we push forward and adjust it a bit, and here's where it stops. So this is about the max distance where we can get consistent signal. How many meters is that, Indonam? 3.66 meters. So for our final test of the day, let's see if the alarm holds up over 3.6 meters. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The burglar alarm works over 3.6 meters. So we answered a few burning questions today. Is it possible to make a burglar alarm with a Nintendo Switch and Joy-Cons? Yeah, yes it is. And if it is possible, just how effective is it? Well, I'd say it's actually surprisingly effective. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, I guess, but to get the IR sensor to work consistently over almost four meters is pretty good, I'd say, and perhaps even useful for a few different situations. And will this new invention take the home security industry by storm? Yes, without a doubt. You can catch me demonstrating this bad boy at your city's next home security expo. Just look for the Indonam booth and I'll get you signed up and ready to go. If you play Game Builder Garage, go download the device. I've left the game ID in the description for you. Hope you guys got something out of this video. Um, this is probably my last GBG slash Joy-Con video for at least a while. I'm happy with how the video turned out, but man, it was, uh, it was exhausting to film. Plus, I'm getting kind of bored of GBG. Like, there's only so long you can put up with it. I don't know, blandness, I guess. And ironically, I have no interest whatsoever to make games with it. That's why all my GBG videos have been about making anything but games with it, because that's the only way I can get inspiration out of this game. Anyway, I might be getting a bit off track, but I'm gonna still be making videos. I'm just gonna be switching up the style a bit and trying different things that I think you guys will like, but I should also like them as well, which is just as important. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please chuck it a like and subscribe if you want to join me on my super cool creative endeavors. And yeah, that's about it today. I'll see you later.